Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Our text is uh, the gospel lesson read just a moment ago, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. If you would turn to the text, either written in the bulletin or in your own Bibles, hopefully you're beginning to bring your own Bible, your sword of the Spirit with you. I want you to go back to the very first part of this text. In, Ma- in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 and following. And behold, a lawyer stood up to him, to Jesus, and to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. This is one of those texts from the Gospels that we begin to see and take a look at and then gives, has a great big surprise. And, and in this particular text, it's one of those we're probably not always aware of. This has been termed and called the parable of the Good Samaritan. But in the text, actually, uh, it doesn't ever say that this is a parable. It begins with the question and a response, and then more question and response. But it never says that Jesus told them this parable. But it's often treated and understood as a parable by many scholars. So we have to ask the question, what is a parable? A parable is an earthly story which has a heavenly meaning. And a lot of times, uh, preachers, pastors will go and say, now you've got all these points that you can make from it. But a parable, by definition, only has one point of comparison, only one connector. So it's a story that's taking place on the earth that then has a heavenly meaning. Today I want to think about this, going down the Jericho Road again. Now to illustrate that, uh, let's think about a few things uh, where we might respond and say, Yeah, that's fine, but I don't want to go down that road again. Oftentimes here at the church building, during the week, we'll get a knock at the door. Carol, our secretary, will invite the person in, talk with them, and they'll say, I have to speak to the pastor. And I'll be in the study or wherever, and Carol will call me and say, you've got someone here who wants to talk to you. And I'll ask, what is it about? They said they didn't say they just want to talk to the pastor. They want to go up into my office, into the study, and talk quietly. And then they tell me a story, and then they ask for money. And my mind goes, okay, which story is this one? I don't really want to go down that road again. It's like with your children. You know, I have grown children and some not so grown. Uh, But in that, you know, they come, they get into those driving years, you know, and and one asks to use the car on a Friday night, and you say, sure, they go use it. Then on Saturday morning, go out and look at the car, and there's this long scratch down the side of it and a dent. Then that next night, on Saturday night, one of the other teenagers says, can I use the car? And you think about that dent in the car that isn't repaired yet, and you say, you know, I really like, I love my kids, I want to do everything for them, but I don't want to, what's the words? Go down that road again. It's just like the telephone calls that you get now on your cell phones as well as your regular phone, and, and they're telemarketers. A friend of mine was telling me yes, or Friday that he's gotten 26 phone calls from this one phone number, and every time it comes on, it's a recording, And the latest one says, this is your last opportunity to respond. This is the IRS. You are going to be sued for your back taxes. Call this number. And what did he tell me? I don't want to go down that road again. Because why? Yeah, I know it's a scam. But how many people, especially older people, will call to that and then you got all kinds of problems. In this parable, we have a journey going back down the road again. 
The parable on the surface looks really nice. It's a parable of the Good Samaritan. And in that, we have, in a sense, I, what I call the laws of economics that take place with the various individuals that are there. You have this lawyer that has a question for Jesus. Now Jesus responds with a story. And he says that a certain man, he doesn't tell us what kind of a man he was. Was he a Jewish man? Was he a Gentile man? Was he a Greek? What was he? We don't know. We don't know his ethnicity. We don't know where he comes from, what country he's from. We don't know if he's Samaritan or if he's Greek or Phoenician or uh, from Jerusalem or Galilee. He just says a certain man was going down the road and was assaulted by the robbers, and they left him beaten, battered in the road. And this is the first of the laws of economics because those robbers were giving this man a message, and they were saying, what's yours is mine. What you have, I'm going to take. What's yours is mine. And they assault him, and they come after him. And it's a lot like the telemarketer scams. They come in there. They're not there to help you. It's not like the person who comes up and says, well, listen, we were just paving a... Uh, uh, asphalt driveway over here, and we see your asphalt driveway isn't so good. We got a little bit of stuff. We'll make you a deal. We'll come over and pave yours. Would you give us a deposit and while we take lunch? What happens? They don't come back because they say, What's well, yours is mine. But in, now in this story, Jesus goes on. He says, there, there comes a priest who comes along, sees this poor fellow, and he crosses over the road. The Levite comes along, he goes around him. And what are they saying to this poor fellow who's been beaten and left in the dirt? They say, what's mine is mine. You know, I, I, I'm going to stay to myself. I'm not going to get involved. God bless you, brother. Hope everything's good. And so they send that message. I'll stay to myself. It's what we do when you pull up to the stoplight and the persons are standing there with the sign you don't even want to read the signs anymore because you've read so many of them, been hit up so many times, you say, I don't want to, what? Go down that road again. You know, you want to help, but boy, just every, every light. You come to some intersection, I've seen it, that in all directions, everywhere Carter, there's somebody standing there with the sign. And we don't even want to read the sign because we don't want to go down that road again. You want to help, but you get tired oftentimes being hit up. So we want to say, I don't want to get involved. What's mine is mine. Now we have this third individual that Jesus talks about. He says this person comes along and he's a Samaritan and he has compassion upon this poor individual and he picks him up, puts him on his own beast, takes him to an inn, puts him up, pays for what he has, and he says, and now when I come back, you know, if there's more expense, I'll take care of it. He had compassion on him. The Greek word there is splachna. He, he had the splachna from the guts, from the interior of his being, to take care of this man. He, he looked upon him with compassion, and he took care of him. And now Jesus asks, you know, before we get to that, what that individual is saying, that good Samaritan, part of that laws of economics, he was saying, now, the first one said, what is yours is mine, the priest and the Levite said, what's mine is mine. Now you know what this Samaritan's message is. What's mine is yours. I'm going to take care of you. Now Jesus then, which of these three was neighbor to this person? And what does the man answer? Well, the one who had mercy. The one who had compassion. And Jesus says, now go do likewise. Now, we can take this story and we can moralize it, which is what we often do, and say what Jesus is telling us to do is to go be good to people, to help them out. And so we go out, and now we see that homeless person on the corner. We give them a dollar, or we give them five dollars, or whatever. We, we talk to that individual at the door. We talk to that telemarker, because you're going to have practice mercy. And we feel good about that. But that is doing disservice to the scripture. That's doing disservice to what is really going on in this narrative that we have here. Let's go back to that individual that Jesus starts the question with. He is a lawyer. He's a teacher of the law. The law is known as the Torah. And he comes and says, teacher, here's the question. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? 
Jesus said, what's written in the law, how do you read it? And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbors yourself. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly, do this, you will live. Now what is he saying? He's answering the, the question that Jesus posed by a strict reading of the law. What do I have to do? And that's what we want to do. We want to say, if I do this, and if I do that, then God's going to be pleased with me, and I'm going to heaven. But the question is, what if you don't do this, or what if you don't do that? Well, let's go a little deeper. Jesus is addressing this lawyer, and he's turning the table. Throughout the book of Luke, as we read through the Gospels, one of those themes of Luke is called the great reversal, where things turn around, go the opposite direction. This lawyer, this teacher of the law, wants to know what he needs to do. What works do I need to do to be saved? What, do I, what is my action? And Jesus asks him, what's your interpretation? What's the scripture? He's asking him, what is the purpose of the Torah? You go to Mount Sinai with Moses who goes up on the mountain and the tablets are given to him and and he brings it to the people. The question we want to ask, was that a grace event or was it a law event? And we oftentimes think it's a law event because God said, do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. But in fact, the event at Sinai is a grace event because God, out of love for his people, out of mercy, out of compassion, So this is how I want you to live. I will be your God. You'll be my people. I have chosen you. You didn't choose me. This lawyer is saying, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus turns the table, and at the very end, he says, who of these three was neighbor? Well, the one who gave mercy. Go do likewise. You'll live. What? Receive mercy mercy. The people of Israel had gone along all of these centuries at the time of Jesus, and they tried to do all these rules and regulations to earn God's favor, and God said, you can't do that. So God, in His mercy, out of His love for people, for you and I, sent His only begotten Son. It is not what we do that saves. It's what God has done. And in this story of the Samaritan, he gives an illustration where we try to do things and feel good about things, but it finally comes down to it's about God's mercy. He reverses with this lawyer the concept that you have to earn eternal life. And actually, eternal life is a gift from God. It's because God in His mercy has done all things for us. So this morning... We can go home and say, well, I'm not like the robber. Oh, and it's not an anti-clerical movie. We're not against pastors, the priests and Levites, who just stick to themselves and and don't do anything. And and, and it's not about being a, a good Samaritan, about going and helping people so we can earn points with God. It's all about remembering God's grace. It is by grace you have been saved by faith, not by works lest any man should boast. It's about mercy. It's about understanding that mercy and then having experienced that mercy, then extending that to others. But the point of this whole narrative is that it's God who's the actor. It is God who's the one who gives mercy. And now he says, go, do likewise. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, God's people said, Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in faith in Jesus Christ to life everlasting with Him. Amen.